Hello, it's me again. Um, today I'm actually joined by another one of the local uh, musicians here in Kansas City. Yesterday you, know, you guys got to meet uh, Kurt Valinga, one of the local horn uh, professionals here in Kansas City. We've got another freelancer, uh, Jerry Old, and his experience goes beyond just being a horn player. Uh, in, in this industry, there's, I, I come across a lot of instruments that involves a lot of research. And uh, fortunately, there's a lot of information online uh, with a lot of, you know, trumpets, trombones, saxophones, etc. There's a lot of really good information online to be found to do some research. When it comes to something like a French horn, though, especially something about 100 years old, I'm just going to kind of pan through the room here. And you'll see that we are extremely fortunate to have somebody in the Kansas City area, right in our backyard, who actually is... A, spore, uh, a horn guru, <laughs> a specialist, if you will. Just the collection of mouthpieces and horns. Jerry's been buying and collecting for some time, and uh, it's just a wealth of knowledge. So uh, another fortunate thing is I walk in to show him our crispy that we've discovered, and what does he pull out? But another vintage crispy that he has <laughs> here, which is awesome to have uh, some to compare these two instruments to. So, uh, Jerry, welcome to the BAC Horn Cast. My pleasure. All right. Um, we, we definitely intend what we uh, were talking about interviewing Kurt Valenga uh, later on. And we're definitely, I know we're going to have people that want to really do have us do an interview with you just talking about some of the instruments you have in your collection because I know you've got some uh, real cool stuff. <laughs> There's some natural horns and everything. So let's uh, talk real quick about, let's talk about your crispy real quick and how you acquired it. And then what we're going to do is, uh, point out some of the things that we've noticed uh, between yours and the one that we just recently discovered. Well, this horn was purchased from Marv McCoy a number of years ago. It's a, um, a nickel uh, crispy. It's a horner model. Uh, it has a larger bell throat on it. <clears throat> this particular horn has uh, is is original with the exception of the lead pipe. And um, the lead pipe is a, an 8D replacement. The problem with the, the original lead pipe was um, damaged and also uh, was losing some focus. There's something going on in the pipe. The new uh, crispy uh, lead pipe was, um, wait a minute, can I get, should, may not want to show that. <laughs> <coughs> the uh, the, the uh, 8D lead pipe is a nickel pipe and obviously. And it's uh, solved some uh, problems it was having. It's given it the horn some focus and made it uh, basically a very playable horn. The horn has some patches. I don't know the the uh, the uh, age of the patches. And it has these pretty much the standard uh, preventative patches here. Uh, it has almost all of these old crispies had a thumb patch uh, as a preventative measure because of the wear, and I notice that your horn has the uh, the typical patch. Um, the horn is, is going to be um, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, the late teens, um, somewhere during World War I or shortly thereafter. And it has the uh, original um, crans or uh, guard at the edge Norm, this was normally put on the older horns as a way, the, the metal was folded over as a, as a means to keep the edge from cracking, which was a fairly common problem with horns. The edge was very delicate. Um, later, um, the horns had a wire put in that, uh, that bend, which made it more durable. Right. The, the uh, crans on this horn is an aftermarket crans. <clears throat> and um, which means that this horn actually might predate my horn. I'm guessing that it probably does. The, the reason is it has a smaller bell throat. It has the added crans. Other than that, uh, the horns are fairly identical. This one has a little more ornamentation on it, which I believe was common later. Um, uh, later. Uh, the, the, the tubing on both horns is seen, I believe. I don't think it would almost have to be seamed on that horn, although I don't... Did we establish that that's... Seen? Yeah, it's, uh, we haven't actually dis discovered that for sure. We're going to do a little bit more research and, 
and try. In fact, yeah. it's it's going to be good to point out some of the differences side by side here on these two horns. One of the big things is the main tuning slide shape. We'll just kind of hold those there. You can kind of see on this horn, it's much more square. And on yours, it's a little bit more round. It's kind of an interesting observation. Um, you do have your original lead pipe, actually. You had mentioned that your your lead pipe was replaced on this horn, but you do have that original, I believe, well, over here. Yeah, with the exception that this lead pipe is brass. It's a period right. pipe because it's seamed. It's a period pipe. But I'm guessing that uh, the original pipe on this horn would have been nickel. So oh, sure. that, that puts this, um, even, even though it's period, it might have been um, just a... An early uh, attempt at uh, swapping lead right. pipes like we do now uh, at the drop of a hat. Now we will see the the shape is actually pretty close to these two pipes though, and we did discover that the receiver on both both of these pipes is certainly original. As yeah, you pointed out earlier, somebody could possibly have taken the original uh, sleeve and receiver I, off, which is what I'm guessing happened because um, everything else on this pipe. That all the guards and the ferrules are in fact nickel, and the pipe itself, even though it's seamed and obviously a period pipe, uh, it is. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess it's not original to the horn, <clears throat> so I'm guessing the original pipe is 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 gone. Okay. However, the, uh, interestingly, <clears throat> and as one might imagine, since this is the this is the horn that the AT was patterned after that the uh, uh, replacement um, Con AD lead pipe actually makes it into a very fine horn. Sure, sure. Let's point out a couple of other things I know that we, we pointed out here on your horn compared to ours. Here's one of the, the, the bigger differences, um, and this is the it's a B flat. the B flat side on the third. First valve. First valve, first valve. Um, nope, nope, completely nope, different. Nope, nope, nope. B flat side on the third valve. Ah, there we go. B flat side of the third valve. You can see uh, this on Jerry's old horn, um, and then this one completely different. It's it's hard to say these ferrules here. It would indicate that it's an original part. However, these braces do not seem to be original. So it is quite possible that this whole uh, slide could be a replacement and that it, it was more like this. And another point is I've, I've never seen uh, in a configuration like that on uh, an original Crispy. Right, and right. They've all had the uh, Paisley shapes. So that's that's an interesting thing to point out. Um, so, and the fact that the f uh, some of the ferrules on here, these ferrules are replacement ferrules. Uh, and the fact that you've pointed out the braces are bad, or are not bad, but are, are modern braces. They don't have the uh, original ornamentation. These guys are uh, are surely a replacement. The old the old uh, pipe uh, probably was damaged, and then this guy was uh, built as a replacement. Sure, sure. 